New solar cells have been discovered with up to 60% conversion efficiency. To give you some context, today's best solar cells on the market have around 25% conversion efficiency. So this would mean more than doubling the amount of electricity that a solar panel is able to actually get from the sun. Obviously, this would completely revolutionize the world. Imagine if imagine if every solar panel in the world could, could generate more than twice as much energy as it does today. We'd have, we'd have actually potentially enough energy to power around half of the world. Now, are these new solar panels going to come to market soon? Well, to be honest, with this kind of technology, it is possible we could see these panels out within a few years. Here are the details. Hello, my friends. Great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Speaking of solar panels, guys, I have a new solar system here on my roof. Obviously, the conversion efficiency of my panels is nowhere near this. It's 23%, but they are amazing. Today, I generated 142 kilowatt of electricity of energy, 142 kilowatt hours, which is just mind blowing. And I recommend if anyone wants to get a solar system installed, the company I use is phenomenal. I'll put a link in the description to that company. They will give you a bit of a discount, of course, because of your association with the electric Viking. A new powerful solar cell with 60% energy conversion potential has been created in a world first. Now, it took the team 15 years to first build this solar cell. So they kept on building different versions and different iterations. That didn't work, that didn't work, that didn't work, that didn't work. Oh, that was good, that's good, but let's get better, let's get better. And finally, they figured out how to create what is clearly game-changing solar cell technology. Now, researchers at the University of uh, Complutense of Madrid in Spain have fabricated an intermediate band solar cell using gallium phosphide and titanium that delivers an energy conversion efficiency of 60%. Now, my first thoughts were, hang on a minute, titanium? Really? That's expensive. But hold on a minute. The solar cell can deliver this performance at a wavelength of 550 nanometers and above. To harness energy from the brightest star in our skies, we have deployed solar cells that convert, obviously, sun into electric current. But, I mean, obviously, solar cells at the moment only harness, on average, the average system conversion efficiency ends up being about 20%. But this silicon-based solar cell, what it does, it only harnesses a part of the sunlight incident on it. So certain rays it doesn't actually harness. Those rays are given off as heat. The upper limit on how much energy a solar cell can convert into electricity is shockley quisa or SQ. Theoretically, it can be computed taking into account the energy of the photon in a single pin junction and the losses seen in a solar cell. Now, basically the SQ, the idea of this concept is the SQ phenomenon is the limit of solar cell efficiency. The SQ limit of a solar cell is subject to the material used to make it. For silicon, the band gap is 1.3 and the SQ limit is 33.7%. So essentially that means that under the, a best case scenario, the highest solar cell ever produced still can't harness 77% of the sunlight incident on it. In fact, yeah, nowhere near that number. But making a solar cell with different compounds means that you can actually bypass the SQ limit. J. Vel Olia Oritsa and his team of researchers at University at, at the University of Madrid have been working for over 15 years with gallium phosphide and titanium in an attempt to make the most efficient solar cells the world has ever seen. So how do they reach this 60% efficiency? Well, apparently the team was building tiny sized or well, tiny solar cells with a titanium absorber no thicker than 50 nanomoles and metal contacts using gold and geranium. So yeah, it sounds very, very expensive to manufacture, but it's actually not as bad as you think. Through a series of experiments in transmittance and reflectance measurements, the team found that the solar cell had a broad band due to enhanced light absorption at a wavelength above 550 nanometers. Now this is likely due to the use of titanium in the cell. The theoretical potential of the structure is therefore 60%. The team first worked with these materials in 2009, but it took them 15 years to build the first devices with them. Even at this point, the device is not close to being deployed in the field though. So obviously we're years away. Its efficiency currently is actually pretty poor. So there's a lot of work to be done before they can actually you know, mass manufacture these panels. 
The team first wants to make a prototype solar cell and demonstrate higher efficiency. They intend to sort issues with solar cell construction by using different approaches to incorporating titanium into potentially existing solar cells. So essentially the team believed that they could take existing solar panels, kind of re-engineer them using titanium instead of silicon. Now obviously titanium um, costs a lot more than silicon. However, not a lot of titanium is needed, only very, very small amounts. And the gold that they initially used to you know, develop their first cells is not actually necessary for these, for these solar panels to have more than double the efficiency of today's existing solar cells. Now, of course, a lot of this is still theoretical. We're a long, long way off. But my point is to say here, that doesn't mean this won't happen. Because we're a long way off does not mean that in 10 years, 15 years time from now, we won't see solar panels with twice the energy efficiency of today's solar panels. I believe we will. In fact, I'm almost 100% certain that we will because now what you can essentially do is import all of this data we have into kind of purpose-built artificial intelligence models. And then those models can actually work out for you the best, most efficient ways to uh, get your end result. So artificial intelligence is helping a lot of companies kind of discover the best way to engineer new products, to improve them, to increase the efficiency, to decrease the costs. That's one of the great things about artificial intelligence. And obviously some of the downsides are that one day it might kill us all. But in the meantime, you're going to find huge improvements in technology thanks to artificial intelligence, solar cells, which will probably come down drastically in price, even though they're really cheap today, and efficiency levels that will dwarf what today's numbers are. Thanks for watching.